All right, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is coding the uh, Black Scholes formula, which you can find here on page 313 of your whole textbook. Um, basically, taking this big function with all these D1s and D2s and all that um, and turning it into something that you can actually use in Excel. Um, we're going to automate it so that it makes your uh, made off projects. Uh, infinitely easier. So basically there's two parts to this um, that we're going to code. Uh, the first part being this n of d1, n of d2, these are um, normal cumulative distribution functions uh, and I'll explain it in a second but basically they're already in Excel but if we're going to use them in VBA it's going to we'd have to go through this whole long call process of um, to call the, the function. So we're going to shorthand that uh, to start off with, so that's the first part of the of the code, and then the second part is actually using that to plug into um, the full Black Scholes formula. So uh, to start off with, go ahead and go into Excel. Um, I've already got it open here, uh, and head over to the Developer tab, and then go to the Visual Basic window. And to start off with, I'm just going to show you guys just to kind of reiterate what that cumulative normal distribution means. It means that it gives you the probability that for whatever number you throw at, throw at the uh, function, it's going to return the probability that that number is at that uh, random normal variable, um, random normal meaning mean zero, standard deviation one, will be at or below that number. So, for example, if I were to go uh, norm s dist, that's the function that you call it in Excel of zero. It's going to return 0.5, and you think that that really makes sense because if you look here, um, if it's if the number is zero, then you'd expect it to be uh, either half above or half below. Um, so that really makes sense. And then as you go out to the right, you're going to see that it's going to get greater and greater because the odds. You remember, it's turning the returning the probability that it's at or below that level. So you're if it, you're doing three. Um, with mean zero standard deviation one, then you're going to get a very a very large probability 0.99865. Um, which you would expect because you see you have all this, the entire middle section and majority of the, all of this tail and the majority of this tail um, covered in that probability. So you would expect it to be really close to one. Um, and you can do that for other values if you wish. So we're going to code that really quick. Um, and as you can see here, I've already got some uh, stuff set up, stuff typed in, just so we're clear on what is what. So we're going to go with, um, we're going to start by coding the cumulative distribution function. So we're going to create a public function. We're going to call it cum norm dist. And then it's going to take x as uh, double, meaning double precision, so 32 point precision. Um, and then it's going to be cum norm dist is equal to, and we're basically going to call that standard deviation. And this is why we're doing this because we're going to go. It's we're going to call it application dot worksheet function dot norm s dist of x. So even though this is the we're basically just calling the same function if we wanted to use this in the Black-Scholes formula um, and as you can see here we're going to need to do this a couple times um, we would have to go through this whole long process and we don't want to do that so we're just going to call it cum norm dist instead uh, and we'll see that play in here in just, in just a little bit. Uh, so that's your first function so did that pretty simple. Now we're going to code the Black-Scholes formula. So do that. It's going to be again a public function because you want it to be uh, usable uh, not just in this work workbook but anytime you open up Excel. So uh, we're going to call it surprise surprise Black-Scholes and it's going to take a bunch of different variables. So it's going to take this thing that we're calling call put flag oh, excuse me it's going to take this thing that we're calling call put, put flag up here. And as you, I don't know if you can see this, but it's, I'm saying use the word call for a call and put for a put. 
And so that's going to be as a string because we're typing in a word. Um, then we're going to use S, which we're calling the spot price, as double. Um, K, again, as double. Um, T, as double. R, as double. Q, as double. And V, as double. And so we're taking all these variables that accept numbers at double, meaning 32 point precision. We're also going to take this Black Scholes formula because this is going to spit us out a number, right? We're going to take that at 32 point precision as well. So to do that, we're going to end it with as double. So now we've got kind of the parameters of the function set up. Now we're going to take, um, we're going to create these dimensions, these D1 and D2. So it's going to be dim D1 as double and D2 as double. And remember that these are um, these things right here. So we're going to solve for these first and then we're going to plug that into this. Um, again, just so it looks a little bit cleaner and we don't have to worry about messing up as much. Uh, we can track our progress a little bit better. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to start with D1. And if you're following along in a whole, um, you'll see that this is fairly straightforward since we've got these variables all picked out. So um, log, right, because that's the, let's talk about natural log, that's the way you code it. So log of S by K plus, and remember to focus on this parenthesis because it's really easy to lose yourself on these. Um, and that could screw up everything. So uh, R minus Q plus V. Um, and we're going to square V, right, because it's volatility squared um, over 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the time period. And divide that by V times. And this is how you call it. This is the function or the way that you code in square root SQR of T. Okay, so that gives us D1. And then D2 is D1 minus V times the square root of T. All right, so you guys sh should have it. It should look like this. Um, and if you look over at here, you'll see it all kind of match up. So there's the S, there's the K, um, the R, and we're doing R minus Q because we're including dividends. They didn't include dividends in here, but we're, we're including dividends, so it's really easy to fix. Uh, plus the volatility squared, uh, sigma squared over two, uh, times T. So you can see all, you can see how this kind of all matches up. So then, now that we have that, we're going to put in an if statement, right? Because if we're doing, it's going to depend on um, this call put flag. Uh, we want this to be able to solve for both calls and puts. So it's going to be if call put flag is equal to call, then, and we're going to set black shoals equal to s times um, exponent. So another the way that you code e, e to something is exp, uh, same way you do it in Excel. So minus Q times T times Q norm of this of D1. And you'll see that that's where it comes into play. So rather than having to type out this whole long thing times D1, it's just easier to do this so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, minus K times EXP of negative R times T times the cube norm disk of D2. Okay. Now if that's if it's a, not a call, so we're gonna want to uh, make sure that we solve for that as well. So else if um, call put flag is equal to a put and black shoals 
Black Scholes is equal to K times the XP of the of R times T times Q norm dist of negative D2 minus S times Q norm dist of negative one times the XP of negative Q times T. And of course don't forget to end your end your if statement, so end if. And that's the function. And so then if we if we save this as excuse me, excuse me. Um, if we then go back here, or we run this, excuse me, we'll call it um, Black Shoals. Create that. Oops. All right. So if you and so if you take this and you pull it over into Excel, um, you can do this one of two ways. You could either set it as Black Shoals and then solve for that, or the way I prefer, so that I don't forget, because the order in which you Put your variables in is going to matter there, and I don't want to have to worry about remembering all that. So if you go down to, you're just going to, you're going to, when you click this little function, um, you'll start in the most recently used category. If you go down to user defined, um, then you can double click on the black shoals, and it'll give you this option. So uh, just for simplicity's sake, we'll solve. Um, we're going to solve. Example 14.6, which is on, which starts on page 315 of your whole textbook. So, uh, the stock price six months from the expiration is $42. So we'll come back to this call put flag. Um, so your S is going to be 42. Your K, if you're looking, you can just follow along right here. You know the problems up there. The exercise price, the strike price, is 40. The time is going to be 0.5 because it's six months. Um, so it's it's half a year because this is in years. The R is ten percent per annum, uh, and Q is not involved because there's no dividends, and then volatility is 0.2. And so, if you look down here, um, you can see that they give you either you know C is going to be equal to 4.76, and P is going to be equal to 0.81. So if you do, we'll do a call here. And if you look right here, lo and behold, this is going to be 4.76. So if you were to change this to a put, then you would expect it to be 0 0.81 because that's what P is down here. And lo and behold, it's 0 0.809, which rounds up to 0.81 so uh, that should give you evidence that that what we coded works um, which is a good thing so again if you want to uh, read more about this or or get a more in-depth explanation um, starting around 313 314 315 um, you can read that uh, but that is how you code uh, Black Shoals into VBA good luck guys.